the scenic rolling hills of southwest Michigan, just a few miles from the shores of Lake Michigan, is the backdrop for today's exciting motocross competition. Hello everyone, I'm Larry Myers. Welcome to Buchanan, Michigan. We're at Redbud Track and Trail for round five of the AMA National Championship Motocross Series. Exciting action to date. This one is going to be no exception. For the past couple of days, it has been raining here, but today, as you can see, the sun is out, the track has dried out, it is going to be gorgeous. Now, before we get to that race action, let's take a look at what happened last week in Sacramento, California at the famed Hangtown track. Heading into round four of the series at Sacramento, it was Team Kawasaki's Mike LaRocco with the season points lead. LaRocco had won two of the three opening rounds of the 125 series. In the opening moto, though, LaRocco involved in a first corner crash was nowhere to be seen. Instead, out front was rider number eight, Jeff Emig. He was followed by local favorite Steve Lampson. Two laps into the race, Lampson makes the pass. He takes over the number one position. He will hold that place until the checkered flag. The surprise here, Lampson coming off a broken femur just five months earlier. It was anticipated that Lampson probably would be out the entire 1992 season. Surprised the experts with a lot of therapy, a lot of pain. He came back strong in his opening race. Cooper Emig, Hughes McGrath followed Lampson across the line. Second moto again, it was Jeff Emig, the team Yamaha rider out front, this time being pursued by the series points leader, Mike LaRocco. LaRocco had finished in the number six position from dead last in the opening moto, had no intention of repeating that performance. In the opening laps, LaRocco pursued Emig while being pursued by rider number 16, Steve Lampson, the winner of the opening moto. LaRocco took his time. When the time was right, he made the pass, took over the number one position. He would finish there. Emig would hold on for the number two position, while Steve Lampson would finish in the number three spot. Strong rides gave Lampson the overall win on the day. Emig would finish second overall. Mike LaRocco with a sixth and a first place finish would finish third, followed by Cooper and Ryan Hughes. 250cc class, the opening moto, a Damon Bradshaw benefit. Larry Brooks had taken the early lead out of the gate. Bradshaw made the pass before the first lap was over, and uh, he said goodbye to the rest of the field. There was no competition. He rode his own race, his own pace, and he would go on to take the moto win. Back in the pack, Jeff Stanton, two times the 250 national champ, and Jean-Michel Bale, the defending 250 national champ, got off the line somewhere around fifth and seventh places, respectively. There you saw Bale with the number one plate coming through. Here comes Jeff Stanton, rider number two, still trailing. He spent most of that opening moto trying to make his way through the pack before it was over bale would move up to the number two position uh, he was way behind bradshaw though no hopes of catching him stanton would move to the number three spot after again battling several riders to get there and no way he would catch bale so that's the way they finished bradshaw bale stanton doug dubach held on for a strong fourth while larry brooks the early leader the top privateer in the field finished in the number five position second 250 moto jean michel bale was a no-show a shoulder injured in Supercross competition put the 250cc defending national champ on the sidelines in a great deal of pain. Again, though, Bradshaw showed the way, the uh, short way around this racetrack to the rest of the field, but Jeff Stanton was right on his rear wheel. Did not get a bad start. As a matter of fact, got an excellent start. Now watch the move coming up. Bradshaw makes a major, major mistake. He said Stanton was following close behind me. I decided to move over, let Stanton go by, follow him for a while, then pass him at the latter part of the moto. But I'll tell you what's going to happen. See, there's Bradshaw standing up, letting Stanton by. He never was able to catch up with Stanton again. Stanton simply used his power and physical conditioning to really away from the field. Bradshaw did win the overall, followed by Stanton. Dubach was third overall. Larry Brooks, strong performances, finished fourth. Cliff Palmer was fifth. After four rounds, Stanton is on top, 179 to Bradshaw, Bale, Kidrowski, Brooks, and Dubach in a tie for fifth. Here's the way they look in the 125 class. LaRocco, Tishner, Cooper, McGrath, and Henry will be back for race action right after this. Welcome back. I'm Larry Myers. You're watching National Championship Motocross Competition from Buchanan, Michigan, Red Bud Track and Trail. Now, since the 1991 round of competition, there have been some changes made to the track. Mike LaRocco, rider number seven, talked to Carl Holman about those changes. So Mike, this is more or less your hometown track. You're from nearby LaPorte, Indiana. Uh, I'm told that you had a lot to do with this new uphill triple jump over here. I don't know if I had a lot to do with it or not. I had a 
Tim Ritchie, the, 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 he builds a track here, and uh, he came out and built me a supercross track over last fall and uh, helped me with a little bit of my track work and I put in a big jump at my house and uh, it's 150 feet so uh, he really liked that and uh, he wanted to buy that my hill from me but he couldn't do that so he wanted something like that for the spectators and the crowd here and um, it's uh, 110 feet I think uh, it's kind of hard to do on a 125 especially now with the mud but you know maybe by moto's times we'll be jumping it um, it's definitely a fun jump to jump do you think, for instance, if you can clear that jump and your competition does not, that it's going to make a difference, significant time difference? Uh, not really today, because when you jump that far and that high, you get a lot of air time, and it's really not making up much time because you're doing a lot of hanging. Opening rounds of the National Championship Series, Mike LaRocco has been doing a lot of hanging around that number one position. As we told you earlier, he is the series points leader. He's ahead of... Uh, uh, Ronnie Tishner by 15, and he is 38 points ahead of Guy Cooper, who has uh, is a former 125 national champ and might add a former winner here at Redbud. Here's what he had to say about that new jump. Guy, they've got a new triple jump on the front section there. I'm told you need to be in fifth gear full out to make it on a 125. Have you uh, tried to do that? Well, the second practice uh, dried out a little bit, and I attempted to go for it and came up short by about 20 feet. So uh, it, it doesn't, you don't land too much harder going for the triple than you do for just doubling it. It's a pretty big double in itself, and then to add the triple to it, it's a lot farther. But um, uh, I think if it dries out more, I think we'll be able to do it but I don't know how much time it's going to save. I think as much air time as you're going to get, hang time, you can probably double it and get the wheels on the ground, power to the ground and go, and probably not lose that much time just doubling. 250s, I think they'll be doing it all day long, but 125s, I don't think it matters. Well, whether it matters or not at this point in time is of little consequence. I will promise you this, though. If later in the day the 125s decide to jump that triple jump, Guy Cooper's going to be one of the first to do it. He certainly is one of the better jumpers and, and uh, certainly the most stylish jumpers in the 125cc class. 125cc first moto about set to get underway. In fact, there goes the gate, and we are racing in the first of two points-paying 125 motos. Now, don't forget, a moto is a race. So these riders will be racing in two motos today to earn points toward the National Championship Series. The points are combined at the end of the day to determine uh, who is the overall winner. One further note, points earned in both the first and second motos will count toward the championship as well as determining uh, who is the uh, champ for the day. Meanwhile, out front from Highland, California, is Team Yamaha's Jeff Emig, rider number eight. At the start of the season, Emig was expected to figure in this championship chase, but a sixth overall at Gainesville, a seventh overall at Southwick, the second round of the series, and an eleventh overall at High Point Raceway in Pennsylvania. That was round three of the series. Kind of dimmed his chances, and I think that the enthusiasts of motocross were beginning to wonder what was wrong with Emig. Well, he rebounded a week ago at Hangtown. He finished second overall, had moto finishes of third and second so maybe he has started that role that uh, in the early season was predicted by many enthusiasts emig still on the opening lap is starting to pull away from the rest of the field now jeff dement a texas rider a youngster on a suzuki is running in the number two position he's quite a ways off the pace already there you see dement right behind him now is guy cooper Cooper has passed a couple of riders already on this opening lap to take over that number three position. Now, Mike LaRocco, uh, easily the favorite to take the win here at uh, Redbud, is well back in the field. LaRocco got a horrible start, so he's going to spend his uh, afternoon, or at least during this first moto, he's going to spend the first part of it working up through the pack to get as many points as he possibly can. Meanwhile, out front, Jeff Emig has one goal in mind, but as much distance between himself and the rest of the field in these early laps as he possibly can. There's the gap between first, second, and third. Jeff uh, Dement still holding second. He's on the inside. Here comes Cooper. Cooper looking for some kind of running room around the outside. He did not have the advantage of that groove to work with. He dropped back into the number three position. That's where he's been for the last several corners. Now Cooper gets the good line on the inside portion of the track. He takes over the number two slot. And as the riders disappear from our view, running around the outside was Tyson Volan. Volan has moved into third, so Dement, with a bad couple of corners, drops from second all the way back to the number four position. 
Meanwhile, Jeff Emig with that huge lead continues to try to increase it. He has not let up one bit. At this point in time, Guy Cooper has two options. One, he could try to catch the fleeing Jeff Emig, and that could prove to be a problem because Emig is going awfully fast at this particular point in time, and uh, Cooper may not have enough time left in this uh, uh, moto to get the job done. And if he tries to catch Emig, he's going to have to let it all hang out. Could be riding right on the edge of disaster throughout the moto. That could create some problems. My guess is Cooper is going to try to hold on to the number two position. That would be his second option. He'll try to stay ahead of uh, Volan. There's Volan running in third. Buddy Antonez now has moved to the number four slot, dropping Demet back to fifth. You had just a quick flash of green in your screen. That uh, was Ryan Hughes. He's currently running in the number six position. Emmy could care less about any of that. He is uh, really picking them up and laying them down here in the opening moto while Cooper is getting all kinds of pressure from Volan. Now here is that battle for the number two position. Coop out front, Volan running in the number two position. Now Volan going to the inside. Will he get the job done? They're side by side. Cooper with a big handful of throttle. They disappear from our view and they're still side by side as they make that corner and come back around the track. Look at this battle for the number two position. Guy Cooper and Tal Tyson Volan, rather, going at it, and now Volan has made the pass. So Volan has taken over the number two position. Cooper drops back to third. There's Buddy Antonez riding in the number four slot. Now Cooper has more on his mind than trying to catch Jeff Emig. His immediate concern would have to be whether or not he can uh, repass Tyson Volan to regain the number two position. Meanwhile, Jeff Emig continues to pull away from the rest of the field. It's Emig, Tyson Volan, Guy Cooper, Buddy Antonez, Ryan Hughes in that order with uh, this race starting to wind down. We're just past the midway point in moto number one of the 125 CC class. Now, Volan really does not have much of an opportunity at this time to catch Emig. He's uh, concerned, of course, with Guy Cooper running in the number three position, and Volan is going to do what he can to uh, block Cooper to keep Cooper behind him so he's concerned about the lines on the racetrack uh, more than he is concerned about letting it hang out and going as fast as he possibly can so unless Emig uh, who is way out front makes some kind of a mistake in the uh, final laps of the opening moto you can hand this one to the Highland California team Yamaha rider so Emig has been on a roll the last couple of weeks and looks like he's going to increase increase that role at least through the first couple of laps here in in Red Bud, or at Red Bud, I should say, in Buchanan, Michigan. The battle still rages for the number two position. Let's go back in the pack. Here's Ryan Hughes now moving on Buddy Antonez, and Hughes has just made that pass, so Hughes moves up one more spot into the number four position. Jeff Emig's best moto finish of the season coming at uh, Hangtown one week ago when he finished uh, second in the second of two motos. Tyson Volan continues to hold down the number two position. Guy Cooper still running in third, and Buddy Antonez has regained the number four slot away from uh, Ryan Hughes. So that battle continues to rage from one end of the track to the other. Out front, no battle at all. Jeff Emig has led since the opening lap. Now, Emig has never won a national championship event. Uh, could be on his way here today. Here's the battle for the number two and three positions. Volan in second, Guy Cooper running third. Coming up now, fourth place, and once again, Ryan Hughes has taken over that position. There's Buddy Antonez back in fifth. Brian Swink is running sixth, and Mike LaRocco from the back of the pack, a terrible start, has moved all the way up to the number seven position. And look at that stuff. LaRocco takes over sixth from Swink. I was just starting to explain that those two riders, Swink from Fenton, Michigan, and LaRocco, who's from nearby uh, South Bend, Indiana uh, area. Those two riders, easily the crowd favorites here at Red Bud Track and Trail. One living just a few miles away, even though he does come from uh, uh, out of state. And the other, of course, being a native Michigander. Uh, those two guys uh, having the cheers of the crowd and of the two, Mike LaRocco getting 
the best in their personal battle to see who comes out on top as he continues his charge toward the front of the pack. Last couple of laps, and as the riders disappear from view, it looked like Cooper may have gotten, may have made the pass on uh, Tyson Bolin. We'll have to wait till they come up over the top. Emig has gone through. Now, this is a lap rider. Let's see who comes up. And it's Guy Cooper. And look at this, running in a number three position. He has really made up the ground is Mike LaRocco. So Guy Cooper, who had to deal with the talent Bolin in the early going, now in the late stages, has to deal with the likes of Mike LaRocco. Here's the leaderboard. We'll be back with a finish right after this. Welcome back. I'm Larry Myers. You're watching National Championship Motocross. This is the conclusion of the opening round of the 125cc class. The last lap, as a matter of fact. Now, Jeff Emig, the rider we just showed you, has led since the outset. While Guy Cooper, rider number five, has been in and out of the number two position all day long, earlier having to fight with uh, Tyson Bolin, and now having to contend with Mike LaRocco, rider number seven aboard the green Kawasaki, who is running third. LaRocco suffering a terrible start. Now, he is the points leader in this 125cc championship chase, but he's going to lose a few points today to uh, uh, Jeff Emig, who is easily going to take the win, and Emig has been the strongest rider as of late. The last couple of races coming up very, very strong. Emig takes a checkered flag. We'll see how that will affect his performance the rest of the day. Now, the two riders in the battle for second on the left side of your screen, Guy Cooper, and on the right, Mike LaRocco coming on strong in the latter stages, but not able to catch Emig. Hughes will finish fourth. Brian Swink was fifth. Uh, dropping down a notch to sixth would be Volan, who earlier in the moto gave up uh, a Guy Cooper fifth. Now, the 125 still crossing the finish line, but taking a parade lap, a farewell lap, if you will. Rider number six is Jeff Ward. He's hanging it up at the end of this season. What a great champion he's been. The only rider to have ever won here in the 125, 250, and 500 cc classes. Now, that's Mike Kudrowski. He won here in 1991 aboard a 125. This is your first year up in the 250 class, of course, defending uh, 125 national champion. Uh, what's your experience been like so far in the 250? I'm um, pretty good. I, I've been running out there uh, top three, top two, and, you know, top four. So, uh, you know, I'm looking for that first win, first moto win. I think that's going to give me a lot of confidence. And, uh, you know, I think that's what it takes. It's just like riding the 125 class. Once you win a national, then, you, you know, you know you can win. You just keep on going. So, uh, I'm looking for the first one. And today, I feel real good. I'm, you know, I'm perfect shape. I'm ready for this race. My Kawasaki is running great, so there's no reason why I can't today. Well, when we return, we'll find out if Mike Kudrowski can. Stay with us. Welcome back to Buchanan, Michigan National Championship Motocross here at Redbud Track and Trail. This is the opening moto in the 250 class. Now, if you've just joined us, we have already watched the uh, opener in the 125 class. Great action there. We're looking for more of the same here in the 250s. The center of the racetrack is where all of the talent is lined up. We saw Jeff Stanton, rider number two, Damon Bradshaw, rider number four, Mike Kidrowski, rider number three was there. And coming out of the center of that track, look at this. They knew where to go, didn't they? It was Jeff Stanton taking the number one position right out of the gate. He's followed closely by Damon Bradshaw, who is holding down the number two slot. Then there are a pair of Kawasaki's, Jeff Matasevich, rider number nine, Mike Kidrowski, rider number three, holding down third and fourth position. The eyes of the crowd, though, up front. Here comes Bradshaw to the inside, and Bradshaw makes the pass. Damon Bradshaw wasting no time and taking over the number one position. Normally, you would expect a rider to maybe follow for a lap or two. Study the lines of the guy in front of you. When you've got a whole moto to do that, uh, normally, a rider will do exactly that, but not this time. Bradshaw went to work early. He wants the uh, lead, perhaps remembering what happened to him one week ago at Hangtown when he let Jeff Stanton by in the second moto, decided he wanted to follow Stanton, but Stanton proved to be too much for Bradshaw, and Stanton went on to take the moto win. So Bradshaw not wasting any time. Stanton dropping back to second. It's still Matasevich, Kidrowski, uh, third and fourth, and running in the number five slot. It was Michael Cray. Now, Jeff Stanton from nearby Sherwood, Michigan, has done a lot of racing on this Redbud track and trail racetrack. Cut his eye teeth here, winning many national championships. And throughout his career, this was a regular Sunday stop for the uh, Team Honda rider. Now, since that time, since turning pro, 
Stanton has uh, garnered several national championships, two times in the 250 class, two times in the Supercross class, and he's looking to add one more in this 250 class in 1992. Obviously, Stanton is the crowd favorite here at Buchanan, Michigan, but right now he has all that he can handle in Damon Bradshaw, who is leading in this, the opening laps of moto number one. There's the difference between the two riders. We look back to the number three. There he is, Jeff Matasevich, and you just got a, a quick glimpse of uh, Mike Kidrowski streaking across in the number four slot. So Stanton picking up the pace just slightly at the close of that opening lap and trying to gain some ground on Bradshaw. It appears that on this treacherous racetrack, uh, one rider might have the advantage over one section and then the next section rolls around and the other rider might feel more comfortable or at home because they are pulling close to each other then spreading back apart. Here you see again, now Stanton is starting to close on Bradshaw. Now this is the area in which Bradshaw passed Stanton, so you wouldn't think that Stanton was quite as good through that section as Bradshaw, but that's not the case at all, at least on that last go-around. Stanton proved to be the faster of the two as he has closed the gap between the two of them, still in the early going, moto number one in this 250cc class. Now we should point out that the championship chase in the 250 class is boiling down to the last couple of races. We've gone through four. This is uh, round number five as we watch Matasevich and Kidrowski do battle for that number three position. This is round number five, and it is a six-race series. Now, coming into this Buchanan event, Jeff Stanton had a 12-point uh, margin over Damon Bradshaw. Now, the way it works out in scoring, you win a moto, you get 25 points. You take second place, you get 22 points. So there is a difference there of three. So let's just uh, play the devil's advocate and say that Bradshaw wins both motos today. Stanton wins uh, a pair of second places. That means Bradshaw will pick up six points. If he does the same in the season finale, that would be a total of 12, and they would end the season actually tied in points. Now, in that case, the rider that... Uh, uh, won the most overall events would be declared the champion and at that point that would be Damon Bradshaw so Bradshaw has everything to gain by taking the lead by trying to win every moto from here on out Jeff Stanton on the other hand needs to follow needs to collect his thoughts he needs to be more methodical about this championship chase not try necessarily to win every moto but to stay with Damon Bradshaw and beat him at least once between now and the end of the season that has to be what uh, uh, Stanton uh, started out to do as this moto got underway, this opening moto in the 250 class. But once on the racetrack, well, what do they say about the best laid plans of mice and men? They often go astray. Well, when you're a racer, a lot of things go astray because when you're on the track, the only thing you think about is the checkered flag. Forget about the fact that you need the points, that you need a second here, a third there, whatever it might be. A racer is a racer is a racer, and they go for the win and the checkered flag every time around. Right now, Stanton letting it all hang out. He's again close to within just a bike length or two of uh, Damon Bradshaw. The crowd senses this intense battle taking place. They're running from one side of the track to the other. This uh, red bud track has a lot of elevation changes. There goes Stanton to the outside, and Jeff Stanton got a good drive around the outside of that corner. He has taken over the number one position. The crowd is loving it. He's from Sherwood, Michigan. This uh, racetrack is in Buchanan, Michigan, just a few miles away and there's Bradshaw. Bradshaw coming right back to regain the number one position. I'm telling you, this crowd is just cheering Jeff Stanton on. They want to see the hometown boy or the local state favorite do well here in Buchanan. And Stanton not giving up. Stanton is not giving away an inch as Bradshaw regained the number one position just a couple of corners after losing it. And Stanton got a good line on the outside, but not quite enough room. Bradshaw holds on to the lead. They rock it out of the corner, and it's still Bradshaw. That big fallaway jump. Look at this, 70, 80 feet in the air. That's how far they fly. Bradshaw comes off the top in the number one position. Stanton right behind. This battle in moto number one is going right to the checkered flag. It is intense. Unbelievable. Great motocross action. Now lap riders are beginning to... Uh, get in the way of both Stanton and Bradshaw. That could be a factor. Now, Bradshaw made a pass on a slower rider. Stanton was not able to make the pass. 
that's going to give just a little bit of breathing room to Bradshaw. Look at this. He picked up about uh, maybe 10, 12 bike links in that exchange with the two slower riders. Stanton is coming right back. He just left it dialed on in a couple of the corners. Now he narrows the gap down to just about two bike links. Every eye in this place following the battle between these two riders in the number one position. There are other good fights going on in this, the first of two motos in this 250 class, but, and Bradshaw goes down. Damon Bradshaw come off the top of that jump. It looked like the back end of the motorcycle kicked up on him, and he went down hard. Now here's the battle for the number three and four position. It was three and four. Now we're looking at a battle unless Bradshaw gets up for second place. And there's Bradshaw's motorcycle. He's crawled to the side of the racetrack. Here comes Matasevich, and he holds on to the number. No, there goes Kudrowski to the outside. Kidrowski will take over the number two position. No, Matasevich comes right back, and it's Matasevich holding the advantage. He's in second spot with his teammate, Kidrowski in third. They're side by side, almost taking each other out. Meanwhile, Damon Bradshaw still on the racetrack. Let's take another look at uh, that incident. Now, here they come. Bradshaw switching lines going from the outside. He was in a portion of the racetrack he had not been riding in. The rear end kicked up threw Bradshaw off the, uh, off the motorcycle, smashed him into the ground, and he has made absolutely no attempt to regain his seat atop the Yamaha. He's going to let this one go. He's not even going to finish the moto. There go his championship uh, uh, chances. It's going to be history from this point out. If anyone is going to catch Jeff Stanton, it will have to be someone else. Now, there's Mike Kudrowski. He's inherited the number two slot as Matasevich drops off the pace. Bradshaw won this event in 1991 in the 250 class. We go all the way back to 1989, and that's the only time that Jeff Stanton was the overall winner here at uh, what has to be considered his home track. There's Stanton. He takes the win, and what a popular win it is. Look at him point at the camera. Says, you all know who is number one. Matasevich is going to take third. Mike Kudrowski crosses the line ahead of him. He'll take a second overall in this, the opening moto of the 250 class. There's Kudrowski. We'll be back with more right after this. Welcome back. Damon Bradshaw crashed in the opening moto of the 250 class. Carl Holman checks his condition. I should ask first, is he okay? Yeah, he appears to be okay. Um, it's his left leg and it's kind of the middle of his hamstring down to his knee. is pretty bruised up at this time, but he is able to walk around and as time goes on, it starts to feel a little bit better, so he should be okay. Keith, you saw Damon go down. What happened? Well, the best I can remember there, Carl, he uh, was coming up the hill there, and he jumped off of a jump a little bit farther to the right of his normal line, and he landed in some pretty deep, soft ground, and it just stuck the front wheel, and I, I think it uh, just pitched him right over the bars and slammed him into the ground. That, of course, was in the 250 class, the crash you saw just prior to going to commercial. We're back now to action in the 125cc class. Jeff Emig won the opening moto, and he's right out front in moto number two. Emig is red hot. Let's take a look, or recap, I should say, moto number one for you. Emig led from the get-go. Guy Cooper was up front along with the Tyson Bolin. Those two riders battling over second place. Mike LaRocco, the crowd favorite, was way back in the pack. Uh, he worked his way up, and uh, prior to uh, the, the checkered flag being thrown, uh, LaRocco had gotten all the way up to third. Cooper had passed Bolin. That's the way they ended in that moto. Bolin dropping out of the top five, went all the way back to sixth after uh, riding second throughout most of the moto. So looking for points, this go around. Emmy Cooper, LaRocco, Hughes, Swink, those were the top five. And a pileup, and that looks like Guy Cooper. If it was, that will just about put the seal on Cooper's attempt to regain for the second time in his career the championship in this 125 class. He was suffering, or he was at a huge points deficit coming into today's round, and uh, boy, that's going to pound him back even further. Meanwhile, Jeff Emig is going the other way in the standings. He started out slow the first couple three rounds, but he has come on strong the last couple rounds. Uh, Ezra Lusk, number 117, comes out of Bainbridge, Georgia. He has moved to the number two position. Let's point that out quickly. But Jeff Emig, who finished uh, second overall at Hangtown a week ago, on his way to outstanding finishes here, barring unforeseen incidents at Redbud, round five of the series. 
Still to be heard from, of course, in this moto is Mike LaRocco, and LaRocco is not that far off the pace. Not when you consider how far back he was in moto number two. Had a glimpse of a couple of green motorcycles. That was Ryan Hughes and Mike LaRocco. We'll catch them when they come through this time. Here's your leader, Jeff Emig. Now let's take a look at the gap between Emig and the rider in second. There he is. That's Ezra Lust, rider number 117. Third, rider number 68, Ryan Hughes. And right on his rear wheel is a Mike LaRocco. Comes out of the South Bend area area not too far away so you can bet that he has a tremendous amount of support as we watch the rest of the 125 field a tremendous amount of sport and look at here here's guy cooper he is way in the back of the pack uh, in fact there are only four or five riders behind cooper so he has a tremendous amount of ground to make up if he wants to be a factor or gain uh, respectable points in this the second moto in the 125 class Boy, we just started to talk about about uh, LaRocco being the crowd favorite when uh, Cooper flashed into view. And it reminds us, of course, that Cooper, no matter where you go in the United States, is one of the favorites regardless of the track. But today, he takes a back seat, not only in this race, but to Mike LaRocco, who has moved, incidentally, to the number three position. He's now uh, in third. That's... Uh, LaRocco there to the left of the screen, just going off the screen, rider number seven, and right behind him is Ryan Hughes. Third place at this juncture belongs to rider number 16 aboard a Suzuki. That's Steve Lampson. Storybook ride on the part of Lampson. Broke his leg uh, uh, in the early part of February at uh, a Supercross. He was expected to be out for the season. He broke the femur. That's the big bone up in the thigh. And they expected that uh, we would not see him again in 1992. Whoa, look at that jump that was just uncorked by Mike LaRocco. Earlier today, we'll get back to the Lampson story in a second, but earlier today, LaRocco discussed that long triple jump that he had a hand in building on this Red Bud track. And we wondered at the time, as did several riders, if that triple jump would be a factor in the 125 competition. LaRocco has just set up this move that he just made to take over second place by completing that triple jump. It gave him some kind of elevation and certainly an advantage as he landed beside Ezra Lusk. And Lusk had to be wondering, where did he come from? How did he gain that kind of ground on that uphill jump? Well, next time, he'll have an opportunity to see, as they complete another circuit, just how LaRocco did it because he's going to be behind him. So now it's Emig, LaRocco, Lusk. Brian Swink has moved into fourth, dropping Hughes back to fifth. Now, I started to mention the uh, Steve Lampson story, how he had broken his leg at a Supercross and how he came back much earlier than the doctors and experts anticipated. He not only came back, but at Hangtown, round number four, or let me correct that, yeah, round number four of the series, he actually won his first ever moto, did that in the opening moto of the, uh, of the day, then came back and won the overall event by finishing third in the second moto. So a storybook finish for Lampson, and uh, he had a lot of fans there. That was kind of his hometown track. Now LaRocco would like to put together for the fans here at Redbud a similar performance. Sands, of course, the broken leg. He would like to win. This is his hometown track in that 125 class. Uh, all the way uh, back into third now, and he has dropped considerably uh, uh, off the pace. That's Ezra Lust, rider number 117, and uh, Brian Swink up to fourth, and we had a quick glimpse of, of uh, Ryan Hughes who has uh, now moved into the number five position. Now here's the battle for the number one position. It's still Emig out front, and Mike LaRocco starting to close on Emig. LaRocco had to come from out of the pack in the opening moto, never really had a crack at the leaders. You had to wonder if he had gotten a better start, if the moto might have turned out differently. Well, this could uh, virtually be called the same situation, so uh, we'll, uh, we'll use our imagination. Emig is out front being chased by Mike LaRocco. Emig from Highland, California. He rides a Yamaha, four-team Yamaha. And here's the man in second place, Mike LaRocco. Comes out of Indiana, and he rides, of course, for Team Kawasaki. Here's third place, Ezra Lust, rider number 117, Bainbridge, Georgia. If you want to make a future bet and say uh, one day uh, this rider or that rider or another rider might be a national champion. Ezra Lusk would be a good rider to bet on. The young man in his first year as a pro has certainly made his presence felt on the national championship circuit. Now LaRocco closing the gap on Jeff Emig. Look at this. We're down to about five bike lengths separating the two. LaRocco has methodically lap after lap picked up a bike length here, a bike length there. 
a second here. And look at this now. Let's make it less than a bike length. As LaRocco pulls alongside Jeff Emig, and LaRocco makes the pass. LaRocco takes over the number one position, and I must say he did it rather handily. Now, Emig knows that LaRocco finished in the number three position in the first moto. So if Emig is able to hold down that number two slot, Emig is going to get the national championship win here. He will take overall honors. He knows all of that. Let's go back and take another look at the pass. I think you'll see Emig really is not to, oh, Emig missed a gear. There it is. Emig was just stomping up and down on that gear lever. That's the reason that uh, LaRocco was able to make the pass so easily. I was almost prepared to say Emig was letting him go, but he missed a gear. LaRocco takes the checkered flag and the win, but that's only going to get him second overall for the day. Jeff Emig, when he crosses the line in second place, will take overall honors. Ezra Lusk, a fine ride to finish third, swing fourth, Ryan Hughes fifth. And coming up, 250cc action as we will have uh, that second moto. We'll find out if Bradshaw is able to ride. We'll be right back. Welcome back. If you've just joined us, we're in southwestern Michigan for National Championship Motocross as sanctioned by the American Motorcyclist Association. It's round five of the 250 and 125 National Championship Series. We have completed action in two motos in the 125 class, and one of the motos has uh, already flashed by in the 250 class. On the line, the riders in the 250 class as we prepare for moto number two. As this one is about set to get underway, word from the pits is Damon Bradshaw will not compete in the second moto. You recall that Bradshaw crashed hard toward the end of the opening moto. He was the uh, only rider really in contention to chase Stanton for the title, and uh, Bradshaw apparently going to drop out of it now. So that leaves things uh, wide open for Jeff Stanton to claim his third 256cc crown. Now let me point out, it is not 100% in the bag. With three motos to go, this one here in Buchanan, then two more in the season finale, uh, Stanton has a 48-point lead over Mike Kudrowski. And here they are. Now, they're battling for third place. Kudrowski is rider number three. Stanton, rider number two. Kudrowski is in third. Stanton is in fourth. Now, if Kudrowski were to win all three of the remaining motos and Stanton did not finish any of the three, then uh, Kudrowski could, or would be rather, named the national champ in the 250 class. Of course, all of that is, is uh, unlikely, but it does leave some speculation right up until the checkered flag in this one. Larry Brooks, a privateer, rider number 30, took the whole shot, and Brooks is out front leading Jeff Ward, rider number six. For many years, Brooks from uh, El Cajon, California, has been one of the top privateers on the circuit, just an inch or so away, it seems, almost at the end of every season, uh, from getting that very, very elusive factory ride. Each year he comes back and plugs away at it. Time is running out on the career of this young man, but he has been uh, just a, a fantastic rider throughout his career, a very delightful young man, and uh, certainly uh, a credit to motocross, a definite asset when we start talking about who does what for the sport and uh, who is a goodwill ambassador and who is not. Larry Brooks is always well up on top. Speaks highly of the sport for himself and, of course, for his sponsors. Now, Mike Kudrowski has moved to the number two position, is dropping Larry Ward, or Jeff Ward, rather, back to uh, third. Jeff Stanton still holding fourth. It's still Brooks out front, and there in the center of your screen, just disappearing Kudrowski. And now, Stanton trying to make the pass on uh, Jeff Ward to move into the number three position, and he did it. So Jeff Stanton takes over third, sets his sights on Kidrowski uh, to win that championship. Stanton needs to beat Kidrowski. If he could do it out here today, Stanton could clinch the title with one round to go. He could walk away and uh, never ride another moto the rest of the year in this 250 class, and he would still be the national champ. Now Kidrowski is bearing down in the privateer Larry Brooks. Brooks is a tough rider. He has held uh, Jeff Ward off through the opening laps of this one and now holding off the likes of Mike Kidrowski. So the privateers getting the job done, fending off the charge of the factory riders. And if you are a privateer, if you are an amateur racer, which a good share of this crowd here at Redbud uh, would fall into that category, then you got to love what has been going on. Kidrowski finally finally makes the break as Ward went wide in a corner. Kudrowski was able to slide underneath to take over the number one position. Now Jeff Stanton seeing that happen uh, probably has figured out and oh Stanton goes off. Jeff Stanton all by himself just nosedived into that corner 
or into that jump, rather, hit the face of it with his front wheel, and Stanton hit the ground. Uh, fortunately, when he went over the bars, he was able to jump up off the top of the motorcycle, did not get tangled up with a bike. Uh, that could have been disastrous. Just a, a few corners ago, we were talking about all of the what-ifs in this championship season. And, of course, the one thing that uh, we did not talk about was Stanton having some kind of a problem. Let's look at it again. Now, watch Jeff Stanton. He just, it looks like maybe he was in the wrong gear. He come up off the top of that jump, nosedive into the second part of it, into the face of that uh, uh, small uh, portion of, uh, of the double jump, went over the handlebars. He was able to get his feet clear of the bike, and uh, that saved him from... Uh, possible serious injuries so you think you've examined every portion of what can happen in a championship chase every minute particle and then something like that occurs it happened to Bradshaw in the opening moto it happened to Stanton in the second moto uh, the only difference being Stanton was able to pick himself up get back on the motorcycle and continued whereas Bradshaw was not so therein lies the difference in a championship break. It is good to be good. You have to be good. There's no question about that. But you have to carry just a little bit of luck with you when it comes to winning championships. Mike Kidrowski holding the number one position. Larry uh, Brooks running in second. Third place, the veteran Jeff Ward. Fourth now is Doug Dubach, rider number 12. He's from Team Yamaha. Then comes Jeff Matasevich in fifth. And uh, running in the number six position all the way back to sixth is Jeff Stanton. He is the championship points leader by some 48 points coming into this, the second moto at Redbud. Now, if he can catch up to the leaders again, if he can go by Kudrowski, he could sew up the championship out here today. I think right now he is happy to uh, be riding it on two wheels, and he wants to salvage whatever he can. Larry Brooks holding off the charge of Jeff Ward, and Jeff Ward not able to get the job done through those corners, but Ward not giving up. He cuts to the inside, now switches lines again, goes to the outside. Brooks is doing a masterful job, an unbelievable job, just taking the lines away from Larry Ward. Look at this, or Jeff Ward, rather. Ward was going to try a block pass there and uh, didn't quite get close enough, and Brooks continues to hold off the charge of the factory rider. His final season of competition, Jeff Ward, rider number six. He would love to go out of this Red Bud facility with some kind of... Uh, grace and poise he has won here three times he did it in the 125 class the 250 class and 500 class no other rider has ever done that here at red bud board after seven national championships rounding out an illustrious career one of the sports great ambassadors he'll be missed look at kudrowski nail that triple jumps 250s have been doing that all day long if you remember in the 125 class it was only in the late going when mike larocco uncorked one and it led to uh, uh larocco moving up and actually taking the win in the second moto. Mike Kidrowski picking him up, laying him down. Kidrowski will be in line for the overall win. Now, Kidrowski has plenty of 125 wins to his credit, but uh, not a 250. Here's Ward around the outside of Brooks. Let's see if he gets the job done this time. He's going to be in good positions. No, and Brooks took the line away from him. He was in good position to make the pass, but he backed off as Brooks just kept it dialed on, and Brooks holds on to the number two position. Ward, I think, is maybe feeling the fact that, hey, with just a few races to go, after 25 years of racing motorcycles, do I really need to take one more chance, let it hang out one more time and, and risk a crash? And I think Ward thinks about those things, and he says, I think not. I think we'll go ahead and let him go, and we'll try again a little bit later in the race. If I grab him, great. If I don't, well, and there he did. See, Brooks came up just a hair short, whereas uh, Ward had a good line through that double jump. He made the pass to take over the number two position. Brooks has to be thinking under that full face helmet. Whoo, he says. Boy, it was a tough go. Well, I'll just sit here and collect third. Well, if he turns around and takes a look at what's going to fill up that uh, goggles that he's wearing under that helmet, he's going to see a big number plate that says number two. That, of course, is Jeff Stanton. So he's out of the frying pan right into the fire. Uh, he gets hardly a breather at all when all of a sudden Stanton pounded on his rear wheel. Uh, no let up at all. Well, that's the way it is when you run up front. That's the difference between the best in the business and those that are just oh so close. Now Larry Brooks has to be tired from that battle with Ward. 
He's going to, no, he takes the line away from Stanton. He rebounds. I thought he was going to hand that position to Stanton, but Brooks is not about to give up. You got to admire that young man. Mike Kidrowski holding down the number one position. Look at Kidrowski. Back in second, it's Larry, or uh, Jeff Ward, rather. Larry Brooks is running third. Fourth place, the property of Jeff Stanton. Well, let's correct that call as the riders come back into view. Here's the battle for the number two position. Stanton has gotten around Larry Brooks, and now he takes the measure of Larry Ward. So Stanton is back up to second place. Again, he finds himself chasing Mike Kudrowski. Last time he did that, Stanton on the low portion of the racetrack went on his head. And uh, he almost called it a season, but Kidrowski takes the win. He'll take the overall for the day, his first ever in the 250 class. And uh, earlier talking with Kidrowski, remember he made mention of that fact that you got to get that first one out of the way, then hopefully they'll come in droves. Here's Jeff Stanton. Actually, the two riders will tie in points for the day, uh, but uh, the overall win will go to Kidrowski by virtue of uh, the fact that uh, he performed best in moto number two. Here's the way they finished in the 125cc overall standings. Jeff Emick, he's on the left of your screen, can't get a champagne open. LaRocco finished second overall, then Lusk, Swink, and Hughes. Emick finally gets the job done. There's Kudrowski uh, dumping champagne on the crowd. He won the 250cc class overall. Jeff Stanton finished second. Then came Jeff Ward, Doug Dubach, and uh, Jeff Matasevich in that order. And there's the gold that the two winners will take uh, home as uh, remembrance from this Red Bud Day. Here's the standings now, 226 to 181 in the uh, 250 class. Uh, that issue still at doubt as we have two motos to go. And there's Jeff Ward. Brought him up to the winner's circle because, well, he is Jeff Ward. Final time. We'll see him here at Redbud. Standings in the 125 class. LaRocco with a healthy margin over Guy Cooper. Emig has worked up to third. Tishner drops to the number four spot, and rounding out the top five is Jeremy McGrath. A huge crowd here at uh, Redbud saw just an outstanding day of racing. At Redbud Track and Trail, round five of the AMA National Championship Motocross Series. A couple of first-time winners. First, Jeff Emig, his first ever national win in the 125 class. Got to make you feel good to get that one out of the way, Jeff. Oh yeah, you know, I mean, you know, I've been, I got a two-two last year. I got a lot of, you know, like a lot of uh, seconds last year, and I got a second in the very last nationals. It came down to, to, a, to a, a, the final laps in the last moto, but. But yeah, I'm like this is definitely the sweetest race ever. <laughs> I'll bet it is. You got a lot more coming in your future. You're a great young rider. For Mike Kudrowski, the man that captured the 250 overall win here at Red Bud, the first ever 250 win of his career. A lot of 125s, but this is one you were shooting for. Yeah, it's you know it's always been my goal to win here, and uh, like last year I won here on the 125, and it was my first national here last year, so. It uh, feels good here to win my first 250 here, and uh, hopefully I can keep it going for the next few years as long as I'm on 250. Well, for Mike Kudrowski, it's a tough way to hoe if he's uh, going to figure into the championship point standings because Jeff Stanton is going to leave here needing only five points at the season finale in Troy. But uh, Killer is not going to give up. He's going to be out there chomping at the bit all the way. Uh, Jeff Emig has still an opportunity. He's going to be way behind in points, but a lot of races to go in the 125 class. So we'll wish both of you gentlemen good luck, and we'll see you all at Troy, Ohio.
We're back at Washougal, Washington for round number seven of the 125cc championship series and round number one of the 500 championship series. Early morning at Washougal, Washington. Fans already starting to pour in. It is going to be a fantastic day of racing under a beautiful Washington sky. Earlier in the day, they gave an award to Jeff Ward, who has been the most successful 500cc racer ever to touch soil here at Washougal. Wardy acknowledging the crowd as he has done year after year here, and you can see Wardy can still pack him in. Many think today might be Wardy's race. We're going to have four great AMA National Championship motos for you today as we take a look at the beautiful Washuga Washington course. But first, let's take a look at what happened last weekend in Troy, Ohio. In Troy, Ohio, it was round number six of the 125 and 250 Championship Series, but different weather conditions. It was very muddy. In moto number one of the 125s, Mike LaRocco from LaPorte, Indiana, took the lead on the Kawasaki. He was followed by Guy Cooper, but after rides and crashes like this and almost get-offs, Cooper was in trouble. Cooper saved it here, but watch this. Cooper goes down. Jeff Emig is right behind him. Emig will take the Yamaha and put it into spot number two. LaRocco stayed out in front to easily win, well, if you can call this easily, moto number one on the Kawasaki. Emig followed him in second place on the Yamaha. Guy Cooper finished in third. Eric Kehoe aboard the Honda in fourth. And Larry Ward finished in spot number five. In moto number two, it was Jeff Emig out of Highland, California. Emig has been on a tear, trying to catch Mike LaRocco in the series point totals. Here you see some of the great action that happened in the mud. It started to dry out, but it was still tough. Jeff Emig won the race aboard the Yamaha, and Emig is starting to catch LaRocco in the points chase. Emig won the moto. Mike LaRocco on the Kawasaki was second. Guy Cooper followed in third. Larry Ward on the Suzuki finished in fourth. As we take a look at moto number one in the 250 class, you'll see that Jeff Stanton took the early lead aboard the Honda. Jean-Michel Bale, Jeff Stanton, Jeff Fantasich, and Jeff Ward all had a great day here. But watch Bale here. Stanton is your early leader. Bale trying to catch up to him. Bale goes down in the mud. Now, something to note, Bale is a mud rider. Stanton is also a mud rider. But look at the trouble Bale has getting the Honda back under power. Jeff Ward goes by in a rut, and you can see these are some of the greatest riders in the world, and they're all having problems. Matasovich sneaks by Bale as well. So right now, Bale was in four spot, but look at this. Here comes Stanton in the same place, and Bale's right behind him. Stanton can't shake him at all. Now Bale, in the exact same area, takes the lead away from Jeff Stanton. Bale won the first moto with Jeff Stanton finishing second, Jeff Ward third, Matasovich finished in the fourth spot, and that's the way it went in moto number one. Here on moto number two, Chicken gets the early lead, but look who comes to the inside. Jeff Stanton aboard the Cliff White tuned Honda takes the lead. Right behind him is Mike Kudrowski. Behind him, Jean-Michel Bale. And Jean-Michel Bale had a great weekend here at Troy, Ohio as he went.